it is the start of May, but to be fair, still a little bit cold, hence why I've got these clothes on. However, the warm weather is upon us, and that means one thing, it does to me anyway, and that is it's time to properly go float fishing. It's my favorite form of angling. I've done it since a young child. I absolutely love the excitement of seeing them come up and taking baits. You can watch what's going on, adapt and change accordingly. And yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing to be out today. It's my first time out this year, and I've come down to an old haunt, Chigbra Fisheries, specifically on Scraley Mere. I'm gonna have the morning here doing a little bit of float fishing. I can't wait to get going. I'm gonna grab the barrow now, have a little look around and get started. Keeping things to a minimum to start with, I'm not gonna go mad and put loads of bait out and just watch for the next half hour. See if I can find a few fish. And while they're hopefully getting confident taking a few, I'm gonna get my rod prepared. Been putting a little bit of bait out and not actually seen anything yet, which could confirm my worries that they're deep in the snags. Um, but yeah, just gonna keep feeding it for now, like four or five baits at a time. That plop can sometimes help, just draws a little bit of interest, gets them to come over and investigate or, or come out from the, the dense undergrowth and have a little look. Now, when the lad said, we well, go and do a little bit of float fishing, obviously I have lied, um, but they did ask me to keep it simple. So normally I'd actually take quite a few rods. Do you know what? I'm really happy today because I've kind of got one main rod. I have brought a spotter all with me, but Scraley's a little bit too small and intimate for starting to chuck dot spots around. Um, you know, I might use it on the main lake later or the venue that we go to potentially later on this afternoon. But I'm in a situation now where I've not seen any fish, nothing's coming up and investigating or taking the bait. And I now need to go that little bit longer. So I'm just using the largest PVA mesh and making up some little mesh bags. And I'll be able to catapult these now, the sort of 40 meters I need over to a bay sort of on the other side of the lake. It's a good tactic. Um, it allows you to fish with a lot less disturbance and casting a spot out. And yeah, I'm gonna get two or three of these little bags over there and see if they're over there. If they don't come up over there after the next sort of 15, 20 minutes, I'm gonna get on my toes. Um, it's the great thing about float fishing. It's visual, you know, the fish are either there or they aren't. They're either feeding or they're not. Um, and if I can't get anything going here, I can't find an opportunity elsewhere. I'm probably gonna get on my toes. Like I said earlier, there's no point in hanging around if they're not coming up and feeding or you can't see black shapes or you can't see vortexes and distortion in the water. I'm seeing nothing. So what is there for me to hang around for? Off to another lake, I think. I've crept into this little corner. They're not going mad, they're taking the odd one. Now, like I say, it's, it's early in the year still, start of May, they've probably not really seen many floating baits so far this year. Hopefully with a little bit of time and that regular introduction, little and often, I can get them up and, and taking a little bit more confidently. Real simple, 10 pound zig fly again, size 10 floater claw, and I've mounted an imitation directly onto the shank. Let's get one out in position. been fished for they'll often come up and maybe deliberately miss a bait knock a bait so yeah I'm focusing completely on the hook bait I'm not watching my line twitch or, or anything like that or a big eruption I'm literally watching the hook bait I'm trying to strike when I see it gets sucked into its mouth sometimes in the moment you mess up you know you think they took it they didn't Kissed it. Oh, 
Yeah, it took a little while, <laughs> fluffed a couple of chances, but eventually we got one. Oh, I love fishing like this, up close and personal. And now I've got one under my belt, I can be a little bit more selective. It's one of the great things about flow fishing. Maybe you're after a particular target fish, maybe it's the biggest fish in the lake or the big ghosty or whatever it is. This style of angling can let you sometimes pick them out. Excellent. As much as I do love fishing exactly what I'm feeding, so a slicker floater or a soft hook ball, that is the great thing or one of the great things with these artificials. You can just shoot them again, no faffing about. Stay buoyant forever. Talking to the buoyancy actually, they're quite, un quite unique. They're, the reason they are so effective in comparison to, for example, a buoyant pop-up is because they have been critically balanced. So they sit low in the surface field, meaning when the fish do come up to take it and they suck it down, it goes into their mouth nice and easy. Looking good. Let's try for another one. Oh, he's a lovely one. <laughs> Couple of nice gulps. There we go. Well, that was a really fun hour. Just like float fishing always is, there was elements of frustration. You miss one and get a bit of line caught around the handle, you know, just the usual stuff. But I struggle to find anything more exciting in my fishing than watching them take off the top. Doing everything as quietly as you possibly can. Um, yeah, hunting them, love it, absolutely love it. A little bit better that one. I'll set the other two back, get this one out for a quick picture. Jump on this big side because I have definitely trashed this little quiet corner now. This is why I love float fishing and coming to Chigbra to catch carp like these. Yeah, it was really fun. Sawn off, 10 pound zig flow, little floater claw, and one of the imitation dog biscuit pellet hook baits. Now I'm going to move into this body of water behind me now. I've spooked them all out of that corner. We get the floater rod out, use the little controllers, fish at a slightly further range, 30, 40 meters. See if we can get another one. Well, I've run out of bait. I've got through half a bag already. So I'm just gonna knock up a fresh mix. These here, they're absolutely great straight out of the pack, but I never think it hurts to give them a little bit of boosted attraction. Plus, the imitation pellet I'm fishing has been soaked in Scopex squid, so it kind of makes sense to match it to the freebies. So that's a little bit of syrup, a little bit of this here. I haven't shook this because I'm trying to get the oil content off the top. The wind is bad, um, and particularly in this swim, I've got a crosswind here, and I'm just gonna use it to flatten the water off a little bit. So I'll give them a good dose of oil and glug, get them all sticky and tacky. Like that. And then to really boost them up, I'm just gonna give them a good dust in in the cultured stick mix. I love this stuff. Give that a good swirl around. All that powder will stick to the outside, fall off down through the water, pulling those fish up to where the actual hook baits are. Mm -mm -mm. It's not looking that easy. The wind's picked up. It's not really playing into my hands. But there's a chance. Um, I'm actually going to change this float over. These new controllers here, they've got reverse taper on. They've got a moulded thread with a swivel built into the top and it allows you to change the main body. I put a real small one on to start with. To be honest, the reason I'd use a controller compared to just freelining is to get out further into the lake to give you the ability to go, you know, the additional range. There's three sizes. I'm putting the middle size on now 
Not because I need to cast further, because I'm actually going to use the resistance and the weight in the float to help me mend the line and keep it straight out here. Like I say, the wind's hacking down the lake. Hopefully, like every time I pick the line up and straighten it back up again, the resistance here will just stop me dragging it back too much towards me. The setup's dead simple. I've got two little beads here. Um, I've then looped to looped on my hook link, 10 pound main line, eight pounds hook link, all the way down to size 10 float claw again. These rods are lush. They've got keeper rings in various different positions. One here, one in the more conventional position up here and one on the bottom of the, the tip itself. Meaning that if you are fishing really, really long hook links, which sometimes I do when the fish are really wary of the float, it means you're not constantly folding your hook link over and kinking it. Anyway, I'm gonna get going because I don't think this next bite's gonna be that easy. In the grand schemes of things, I've not got much with me. No bed chair, no bivvy, no loads of buckets of bait and excess tackle. It's just a nice way to angle. Talking specifically about my terminal tackle, I've managed to condense absolutely everything into this little 125 water box. Um, inside here, I've got my floats, got my swivels, got my hook links, etc. Um, there's a pouch in the top, I've got some zig screws in there, some refill for the PVA, because you can tend to go through quite a lot of that if you're pouching out lots of bags. Um, I've got a water box organizer here, selection of hooks from size 12 up until size 7. I've got a little pouch here with some 10 and 12 pound zig flow inside it and a selection of the new controllers and then three smaller compartmented boxes this particular one is an eight i've got some zig liner tubes some bait bands and um, some ledger stops a further compartment box with some bread bombs a couple of needles and some hair stops and then the final one is actually a hook box you're supposed to put sort of hand sharpened hooks in but it works perfectly for some kind of zig bug s type things i've got imitation bread here and imitation riser pellets so all in all a real neat compact little setup everything i need for a proper day's float of fishing and if you incorporate the barrow into it it really does take so much stress out of the fishing and basically means you can enjoy your day out haven't got long now it's just gone lunch got about an hour before i need to get going let's try and get one more fish before we wrap it up a nice quick bite out of this swim I'll tell you another great thing about this rod this has been the first time in years that i've not got my trainers wet normally i'll be running in now like trying to stop it going around the corner don't get me wrong love my scopes it is a nice rod for this kind of fishing. Yeah. And that is my first flight session of the year over. A mixture of stalking them with the sawn off and a free lined imitation mixer. And on the longer floater rotor rod, catapulting slicker floaters and riser pellets out there into the lake. Yeah, it's just been really exciting. It's my favorite way of angling. And I hope you guys get the opportunity over the coming weeks and months to get out of there and do a little bit of float fishing yourselves.